This is Jonathan Henry. He is a Kiwi emergency physician based in Melbourne with interests in critical care echo and using ultrasound in resource limited settings, which I think is what the talk is going to be about today. So if we welcome him. Hi everyone, thanks for getting up early. Oh, there's there are more people here now. Wow. Um <clears throat> and thank you very much for the opportunity to talk on a topic that uh I find really fascinating and enjoyable to be involved in, which is focus in resource limited settings. So, you know, this term uh, resource limited settings is something that we all intuitively understand, you know, even working in our Australasian and Kiwi EDs, uh, you know, whether the resources are bed space, you know, bed block, access to imaging, sonographers going home at 5 p.m. You know, we can all we all intuitively kind of understand how POCUS can often kind of fill that gap because uh, it's something that we can really control ourselves. Um, we know I'm using this term. I'm sort of talking about using uh, POCUS in low middle income countries, but also like all of us sitting at the front here. You know, there's a lot of overlap between pre-hospital ultrasound, uh, rural and remote. You know. And we heard about Gaynor going to Antarctica, which sounds amazing. So sort of austere pocus, you might call it. And uh, is Gillian still here? Uh, so awesome that you've um, stayed for the conference and being involved in our little community. Um, you know, it's been a bit of a <coughs> thread running through the conference, like, you know, hearing about system factors and guideline factors that lead to sort of inequity and access to old ultrasound and then we heard from Jed about how uh, South Africa has gone through their POCUS journey but um, my journey sort of started uh, right after my ED registrar training I thought I really want to get some global health experience so I toddled off to Vanuatu with my little um, M turbo with the ripped bag there so I was always sort of scaring up and down this little hill um, when the nurses are calling with a sick patient scanning uh you know scanning pathology and i was lucky that there's a lot of junior doctors at this hospital northern provincial hospital i was at um for six months and i was really able to um do a lot of education with them um and yeah i had a great time you know uh one of those formative experiences in life that you you know i i know that many people in this room have had uh, a lot of global health experiences like this. Um, but I'll, I'll vividly remember this <clears throat> one conversation I had with the Dr. Ryan. We'd had some amazing experiences. Like once I'd been standing over his shoulder when he diagnosed a ruptured ectopic in a really sick patient. Uh, they'd rushed them around to fear that she'd survived. And you sort of, as I was leaving, he's like, oh, Jono, what are you going to You know, you're taking the ultrasound away. Uh, what next? And I sort of said, look, you know, we'll come back, we, you know, we'll, we'll um, get you guys some handheld ultrasounds, uh, we'll, we'll upskill you. And he's like, okay, great. And then I walked away and I thought, why on earth did I say that? Like, I've, <laughs> how on earth are we going to follow through with that promise? Um, and then luckily COVID happened, so that gave me a bit of um, breathing room. But eventually I thought, you know, let's um, make this happen. And I thought, what does um, the POCUS world need? Another acronym. So um, We came up with pearls uh which obviously it's in the name and and i should say thank you very much to um emugs and kian actually designed this logo and stacy really helped me at the start of this whole thing um sort of building the vision for it so we uh logically started back in vanuatu in august of last year and you recognize uh, familiar faces joe Mick Killeen and my colleague um, Darcy Mahaji, we traveled there pretty much when the borders opened uh, after COVID. So we took 10 handheld ultrasound probes um, and trained up 10 learners. The course format, you know, it's not rocket science. It, it um, really, I designed this based on my personal experience there, what I felt had the highest utility, um, and like Jed was telling us, you know, uh, no good um, diagnosing aortic dissections when you don't have a uh, surgeon on site that can help. 
So really I tried to, you know, target the highest yield um, things that, for which there were management options locally. Of course, we started with um, exploring Vanuatu's beautiful blue holes, getting out into nature. And a um, bit of a cautionary tale, if you, um, uh, those of you who've traveled around Melanesia, you better get used to spending some time in kava bars. Um, maybe don't drink too many uh, the night before your, your, the first day of your course. Um, but yeah, that's us just um, getting out there with the locals. But of course we did some work too. So here's Joe, um, you know, teaching the learners here. Um, really, you know, really how we run the course is no different from how, it, you know, we all uh, run courses, what we're familiar with. This is, uh, we made our phantoms using tofu because we couldn't find really chunky um, chicken breasts, which was, was our plan A. <laughs> um, and yeah, all of you guys are familiar with the butterfly uh, probe, which can plug into the smartphone or the tablet. Um, we don't have a, like a formal affiliation with butterfly. It's just kind of how it's panned out so far. So after the three day course, um, you know, I really strongly felt that we should have some longevity to the program. And luckily we had uh, complimentary access to butterflies cloud. So the, yes, there's some issues with Wi-Fi access, et cetera, but the learners had their phone um, and their probe and they could start uploading to the cloud. And, and I'll just click through. So this is, this is the perspective if, um, from our Pearls image reviewers. If you're um, looking on your phone at the cloud, um, you can sort of pick the correct archive that you're hoping to, um, hoping to review. Uh, you'll see, uh, yeah, yeah, you, you, it's obvious. You, you're going to pick your scan that you're going to um, review. Your studies come up. Um, you notice the, the little comments that might have already been made on that study. So you click on this, you're seeing a bit of free fluid. You notice um, Gabby has already um, had a bit of back and forth with one of the learners, um, learning conversation keep flicking through the images. Um, <clears throat> and then you might come across a study that you want to comment on. Uh, put a little, uh, I'm a big fan of emojis in the comments, by the way. Um, coming up here, there we go. Keep it positive always is my other philosophy. So yeah, um, that's, that's our kind of um, model of ongoing feedback that we can provide the learners. And this, will, this comment will ping up on their phone. Um, hopefully we can provide that feedback rapidly because I, I feel that immediacy is important, um, a really important part of feedback. You know, they'll have forgotten the case within two or three days, but if we can be rapid with our feedback, I think that's really valuable. So having finished in Vanuatu, we thought, well, where to next? And um, Gabby put her hand up and said, we'd really like to take the same model to Tonga. You see the familiar faces there as well. Owen in the back there. Um, Joe went back. Gabby, Mike Nichols from Auckland and Susie Hamilton from Christchurch. So it was really a sort of um, nexus at Auckland ED, um, which already had a strong connection to Tonga via Mike. Um, and yeah, yeah, it sounded like, again, really incredible um, course. They had a very sort of multi-specialty group of learners across from surgical and ONG, and it sounded like a really positive um, sort of collaborative experience uh, that you can ask Gabby all about. So then next, uh, we then uh, started this concept called Pearls Coaching because we heard of individual learners around the Pacific who really wanted to learn ultrasound, but it wasn't going to be practical that someone can 
and travel out to teach them. So st we started in Papua New Guinea with a Dr. Donna Piemnock, really experienced emergency physician in Lay. And we connected her with the ultrasound fellow at the place I work, Frankston, um, Elise Pasco. And um, with, through some trial and error, Zoom calls, resource sharing, um, we started to upskill Donna in the use of ultrasound. And of course, you can all imagine the pathology in Papua New Guinea, high prevalence of HIV, TB, trauma, delayed presentations to hospital. Um, and so, you know, as you can imagine, a lot of the images coming through the cloud are just incredible things that we've never seen before. I've never seen before. Next up, Kiribati. So I don't know if you guys have heard of Brady Tassica. He's a basin from Tasmania. He's got a strong connection to Kiribati. Uh, and he traveled there for a month, just a couple months ago. He took two butterflies with him and he intentionally, um, I don't think he considered himself a POCUS um, expert before going, but he intentionally upskilled in ultrasound before traveling there. During his month, he spent a lot of time um, teaching uh, Dr. Tabutoa and Tianako. And in addition, we linked him with two clinicians from Christchurch. You guys might know Jacques Lubzer and the sonographer Josie McFarlane. So they, they sort of gave a remote Pearls coaching um, backup uh, while Brady was on the ground um, able to, you know, it's sort of like a more of a hybrid model. And I think it's, it turned out really successful. They're putting a lot of effort and those two learners uh, are still really, really engaged um, after Brady's trip. Fiji, um, I just mentioned Fiji because two of the Vanuatu ED registrars have now traveled to Fiji with their probes. Turns out um, Fiji has a pretty thriving POCUS community. Probably a, a lot of you would um, know that. I know Chris has um, spent some time there and Joe has just recently um, uh, delivered a course there. But I think they even have a lot of homegrown uh, self-run courses that are happening in Fiji and EDs. In Samoa, there was a probe donated to a Dr. Nolan Fuamutu, and we're still um, trying to link him up to a um, Pearl's coach, potentially um, Middlemore might be the logical place that um, starts, keeps training him from now. And I just mentioned Solomon's because there's a lot of interest from Solomon's, and I would hope that we manage to run an inaugural course there in 2024, but a uh, very early planning phase. And I just wanted to really emphasize Papua New Guinea. Um, you know, if you, if you look at this map of Oceania and you sort of screen off um, Australia, New Zealand, West Papua, and then you sort of uh, ignore the US islands of like Guam and Hawaii and then the French protectorates, um, what's left is, you know, what we logically have the strongest connection to in Australia and New Zealand. Of that, uh, Papua New Guinea is like two thirds of the population. So it's really the bulk of the medicine that's happening in um, sort of what we think as, of as the Pacific, um, our neighbors. So it, it'll be logical that we have more of a, uh, you know, put a lot of resource into there in the coming years. So what have we done so far? We've run the two courses, 21 attendees, um, we've got our three pills coaches for three learners, 18 butterfly probes handed out, roughly 300 studies uploaded to the cloud. It's a little bit uh, tricky to tell exactly because sometimes the learners sort of clump, you know, you guys would know they sort of clump numerous studies into one upload. Can't really tell how many patients there were. And we've got 16 reviewers um, connected to the cloud that can provide feedback and comments. I don't know if people have heard of Gecko. So ACEM um, has a really strong, flourishing global emergency care community. And in the last few years, they've really sort of profession professionalized and um, strengthened that arm. Uh, on this map, there's, uh, there's sort of a map of all the global health work that ACEM is involved in. And I'll just draw your attention to the red um, dots. 
these are countries where there's a specific person, like, for example, Mike Nichols, where they call them a country liaison representative, and they should be there coordinating um, all the global emergency care work that's happening between Australia, New Zealand, and the country. So I just really, I find it, um, I think it's really important that we coordinate any activities through these people. The next thing that we developed was our Pearls Lecture Series. So once a month, uh, we get uh, a uh, ultrasound expert uh, from all around the world, expert in specifically resource limited setting scanning. Um, and they do a Zoom lecture and we connect the learners. It's something that sort of provides a bit more continuity post course. Um, this is the uh, this is the list so far. We started with Tamez Jen, who again has that really strong eMugs uh, link, which was really great. You might notice um, Tom Haller talked to us about the FASH exam. Um, that was exciting because he created the FASH exam. Uh, that's, a, that's a sort of a, a medical use of the FAST exam. I'm looking for um, uh, evidence of TB associated HIV, HIV associated TB. And Martin uh, Nikas gave us a talk the other day, which was amazing. Everything is uploaded to YouTube as well. So even if you can't make the um, lecture, you can watch along. Next up, Casey and uh, Dr. Eki will be um, speaking to us. So I really feel that, you know, in this room, there's just so much experience. A lot of you guys have got, had a lot of global health experience as well. At this moment, the within pearls i'm just going to list off the things that um you know potentially some of you maybe be able to contribute um if we're going to go into a new country and deliver a course it is a, a decent amount of effort and you sort of need a single champion that's going to drive it organize it you don't have to do the whole job yourself obviously but someone needs to direct it and then maintain continuity um, for long-term follow-up. And again, talk to Gabby about that process in Tonga. Challenging, a lot of work, but extremely rewarding. Then I, I do think that our Pearls coach model has a lot of potential. We haven't, um, I think we need to standardize it and um, uh, yeah, I guess standardize the resources that we're using. And there's room for somebody to really coordinate um, that. And then tech support. Um, I'm just constantly receiving texts like uh, uh, my login, you know, or I can't connect to this, or I'm having trouble with the probe or the iPad. And, uh, um, you know, I don't know if people, anyone here or a team of people here who may be familiar with the butterfly, the butterfly cloud, who are sort of uh, into tech and everything who would enjoy that process of being tech support. I'm not, I'm not really that kind of guy, but, but I, uh, but then again, it is actually quite fun to like, uh, you know, once it's all um, working smoothly, that's, that's actually pretty cool to see it. The final product happening. Uh, individual pearls coaches, you know, um, so if you can imagine yourself remotely spending some time with a learner, you know, once a week, once a fortnight, um, video conferencing, and then, you know, sending comments back and forth as they upload images to the cloud, you know, we can connect you with someone. Ah, and if, if someone was mentioning, for example, there were butterflies sitting with learners in Sri Lanka. Uh, so if you know, if you know any isolated learner around the world with a butterfly, just send them our way and we could connect them to a Pearls coach. I think we need to look into, you know, the statistics and, uh, you know, look into um, what's appearing on our cloud and sort of analyze how people are using the, the probes. We haven't done a lot of that yet. There's, as you can imagine, there's a lot of admin involved in this um, program. I want to start a monthly newsletter. Uh, we've got a bit of social media going on. and. If anyone enjoys that process of um, uh, managing a big image archive database, 
you know, assigning certain studies in certain directions, even thinking forwards to can we start more formally credentialing the learners maybe one day down the track. So where to next? There's interest from an um, intensivist at John Hunter to um, take this model and uh, apply it to the ICU setting in resource limited settings, commonly run by anesthetists, um, ICUs in the Pacific. Upcoming courses, as we've talked about, and we definitely want to return, uh, refresh and advance our learners in Vanuatu and Tonga. I think already we've seen a couple of our students become proficient enough to instruct on the next course. To be fair, they, they did have um, ultrasound experience prior to the course. Um, definitely the um, Pacific clinicians would be interested to travel over to Australia, New Zealand and spend time with any of us at our um, hospitals and you know, really spend a lot of time scanning in our setting. And, um, you know, the PEARLS project, specifically in Tonga, I think really ignited a lot of um, enthusiasm. And uh, I think there's hope or energy to do something more long-term and f formal in Tonga specifically. But watch the space. I think Gabby's got a lot of bright ideas. So, yeah, anyone interested, have a think. I think there's, uh, um, you know, there might be a point in, in your career or life that you've got a bit of um, bandwidth, a bit of time to get involved in something like this. I find it really enjoyable. Like, uh, you know, anytime I see an image pop up on the cloud, I almost sort of uh, put myself in the shoes of the clinician, often some tiny island scanning and, uh, you know, trying to um, uh, have a back and forth on the comments thread and, you know, brainstorm how, how we can help out that patient and really see some images that you're not used to seeing back home. I will leave this up on the screen if anyone wants to jot down uh, any of this and take any questions. Thank you.